At this place in history, we're on the campus of Northern Vermont University, Linden, with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. What are we talking about today? So today we're going to be talking about a titan of industry, founder of one of our major corporations here in the U.S., and he has great ties right here where we're standing in Linden. So Amanda, we are inside the Vale Museum and Michael Thurston with the Manor Vale Society is joining us so we can do a little more exploring here. T.N. Vale, Theodore Vale, was the first president of AT&T. And he came to Vermont to see a friend, had the best night's sleep he said he'd ever had in his life, wanted a place. So in 1883, he bought a little farmhouse and uh, if you look at the mural here behind us, over the years that he owned the little farmhouse, it became something else entirely. Now, how did he grow AT&T? It's often said that Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone and T.N. Bell invented the telephone business. He figured out the wiring. He knew it from the telegraph industry, which is where he came from. There were some interesting problems, like how do you do New York City? You put all those wires in the air, you're not gonna be able to see the sky. So they did underground stuff in New York City and that was all T.N. Vale's work. Any big power meetings, conferences happen here in Vermont? Well, certainly some, I mean, William Howard Taft would come here. Some, a lot of his friends would come and visit, you know, a good excuse to get out of the city and into the country. Um, there's rumored to have been tremendous meetings here in the formation of, of AT&T, but nobody's really been able to to prove that. And you mentioned Taft, and I noticed there are two very large chairs. They almost look mm. like thrones in here, and one has Taft's name, and one has Vale's name. Can you tell us about those? Yeah. They were commissioned by T.N. Vale so that he and his buddy, William Howard Taft, could sit in front of the fire in a comfortable chair. They were both very large men, and they liked to have private conversations. And so these hooded chairs helped keep their conversations confidential, kept them warm because the two chairs would trap heat from the fireplace, and they would sit on what was known as the stone porch with the fireplace and converse. So where is the farmhouse today? The farmhouse is gone. Oh. It was torn down, the mansion was torn down in 1974 mm. uh, because it was structurally unsound. But then it, they broke five steel braided cables trying to pull it down. But pieces of it are in this room that we're in right yes. now. Can you describe where we are? We are in the Vail Museum, third floor of the current Vail building. And the primary portion of the Vail building, which is not this section, it's another section, actually mimics the footprint of the original Vail Mansion. Now I want to talk a little bit about um, Vail's contribution to this community in this state. What are the other kind of fingerprints that uh, T.M. Well, Vail this was has? a big, as a, a lot of the industrialist mansions were working farms, and this was no exception. There was a huge farm here, so it employed a fair number of people. This was, it was a very community-oriented property. He'd have big parties invite the community. They used to do a clam bake, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, just he was very, very generous with the community. Hey Steve, are you there? Yeah, man, I'm right here at this place in history. 